Hi, I'm Steve from The Thrill Seekers. Um, in my last episode of In The Studio, we looked at using an iPhone for controlling tractor. Uh, we kind of know that not everybody has um, an APC40 or some other control surface, but loads of people do have these, and it's a really fun way to actually control tractor and get into the whole laptop DJing thing. Um, we're gonna show you how it works, how to set it up, and, um, and what it does basically. So there are basically three things that you need. First of all is Traktor, uh, either on a PC or a Mac. Um, then we need to have um, Touch OSC on your iPhone or your iPad or your iTouch. And then between those two programs sits uh, another program which interprets the messages from the iPhone and converts them to MIDI and then sends that information to Traktor. So on a Mac that's called uh, Oscillator. Uh, on, the, on the PC it's actually something slightly different but um, I won't get into those details now because what we're going to do is put all the files and all the instructions on what you need to do to get this working in a file that you can download from my website and the details for that will be um, coming up on the screen at the end of this tutorial. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to get this up and running is to make sure um, your iPhone or your iTouch is on the same Wi-Fi network as uh, your laptop. So what I've done is basically just set up um, a Wi-Fi network for the laptop um, called Touch OSC Demo. And on the iPhone is basically just select that network. So we're now on the same Wi-Fi network. Um, okay, so the next thing we need to do is um, download to the iPhone um, the template which um, Touch OSC uses and basically the way we do that is first of all you need to install um, Touch OSC Editor which you can download from the Hexler website. And we're going to make um, a text file with all this information in as well which you can download from our website with step-by-step -step instructions. Um, so once you have the Touch OSC Editor installed what you can do is basically just double click this file which we'll give you and it will load the editor and just load Touch OSC on your iPhone or your iPod Touch and basically hit the sync button and that will basically send all this information to the app on the iPhone and once that's done just press stop, press done and basically you will see um, the same layouts on the iPhone. Um, along the top we have different pages which give us access to the different parameters Okay, so the next step is to um, run Osculator, which basically sits between the iPhone and Traktor and converts the messages from Touch OSC into MIDI and then sends them to Traktor as MIDI CC messages which are used to control all the buttons and failures and everything else that goes on. Um, okay, so basically the next step is to load um, the Traktor Osculator or Oscillator, double click it and we'll see all the mappings there that um, Jay, who works with me, has painstakingly put together. We'll know if it's all working if when we touch one of the faders we can see the green light appear on the screen, which we can, so we know they're talking. And the next bit is to go into Tractor itself. Um, I'll just go into Tractor. Here we go. Right, okay, so the last thing we need to do is to load the, the mappings for Tractor, which is um, the TSI file, which is also in the files we have provided. So we basically go to controller management, click on import and if we go to the folder which we're providing, click on um, fuelseekers touch osc.tsi and load that into Traktor. Once you've done that you will see it appear here um, as generic MIDI uh, oscillator out. And once selected, you'll see all the all the parameters which have been mapped. Okay, so that's how we actually get it um, to talk to Traktor. Let's see it in action. Okay, so now we've got um, Touch OSC talking with Traktor. Let's have a look at what we can actually do. Um, the first page is the mixer page, and if you saw my other video, you'll know that I prefer mixing with um, filters rather than EQ. So basically, on the outside, we have high pass filters which are mapped to effects three and four and that will control the high pass filter. In the middle we have um, our main volume fader. Um, beneath 
the fader we have um, effects um, on for effects number one and we have um, EQ kill switches beneath the high pass filter. Uh, onto the next page is the Q page. So um, for deck one, Q.1, Q.2, Q.3 and play and stop. So I'll just leave that playing um, so you can hear the filter working. Kill switches. Okay, um, if I turn effect one on and then go to the effects page, we can basically um, see the effects working. Um, what we can also do is use the plus and minus keys or up and down keys to, uh, to scroll through the effects which you have um, in your effects slots. Uh, on to the next page, we have um, the browser which allows you to go through your playlists and then use the track scroll to choose a track and then load to deck B or to deck A. And finally we have the loop page which allows us to set loops so we'll just do a quick loop on deck A so you can see. Um, so basically three, four, one. Yeah, so we've got a loop there so that's that working. And we can also half the loop and out again. So that's uh, the looping. Um, let's just go back to the mixer. Make sure deck two is turned down. We'll just um, ramp up the high pass filter there. And we'll just do a very quick mix to show this working. So, so yeah, second deck is now playing. And we're just gonna quickly do a very, very quick mix just to show how this works. So. So we can hear the second track coming in there. So um, I'm not gonna run this through right to the end because um, I'll let you have the fun with that yourself. So that's basically it. Let me just turn this down. Oh, the great thing is you can, it's multi-touch as well, so you can control um, as many controls as you have fingers, basically. Um, okay, so if you want more detailed information on how to get this up and running, or if anything wasn't clear, then go to the website, um, which will come up at the end of this episode. And as well as being able to download the files, there's also um, a text file with all the links and details for all the files that you're going to need, and how to get it working. Um, so I hope that's been useful for you. Um, we've had loads of emails asking me to do um, an episode on how to get kick and bass to work within a track. So that's uh, next on uh, the list of things to do. Um, but until then, um, have a little bit of fun with this and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.